Hello friends, thanks for stopping by today. I'm Smita Katti, I blog at smilingcolors.com. You can also find me on Instagram as The Shiny Nest. In this tutorial today, we'll be learning how to make our own DIY state wall art. This is a really fun craft, something you can finish within 15 minutes and it's so satisfying to make. Before I start the tutorial, I want to quickly apologize for not being here on YouTube for the past couple of weeks. This weekend, the Pinners Conference was in Minnesota and I just presented my first class there and the weeks before that I was just preparing and ordering and prepping for kids. It was so much fun, I enjoyed it. I also was so inspired by all the wooden signs that I saw at the show. There were all kinds of signs and state shapes with quotes and I thought to myself, how can I make this once I get home? So here's what you'll need to make this along with me. I have a 7x7 seven seven inch wood frame here. This is basswood, but you could easily use any kind of wood plank that you buy in a hardware store. You can use a sign if you have it, or you can also use a canvas for this. You'll also need an outline of your state. I'm creating a Minnesota state art, and I printed and resized this in Photoshop so that it fits inside my frame. You can also use a quote here if you want to, or maybe put something like sisters. So this is something you can customize very easily to suit you. I'm using the Tomba Mana Multi-Liquid Glue today. This is amazing because it stays tacky and that is extremely important when you want to emboss with. To emboss, I'm using a black embossing powder by Nuvo. You can use any embossing powder you have, but just make sure it is a fine embossing powder. If you use a thicker embossing powder, you'll lose all of the fine details. Next, you'll also need two paint brushes. I'm using some inexpensive paint brushes. I probably end up throwing these. You need a fine, delicate paintbrush to do all of the outlining and you also need a bigger, broader paintbrush to dust off all the excess embossing powder. Finally, you'll also need a pencil. I'm using a dark HP pencil for this and you'll also need a heat gun or a heat tool to melt the embossing powder and I'll show which one I use towards the end of this video. Okay, the first thing you need to do is trim off the excess around your map, flip it over and then scribble on the back of it using your pencil. I'm holding my pencil at an angle and I can kind of see the outline of the state still and I'm just making sure I'm covering all of the outline and scribbling around it. And the pencil will help us transfer the outline onto the wood. Okay now I'm going to place my map right side up and I need to center this into the frame. But what I do is I'm just using my paintbrush as a guide and kind of making sure that the same amount of space is there all around the map between the frame. What I mean is the same amount of space is there between the frame and the map all around on all four sides. You can also now tape this onto the wood if you need to, but I'm just going to hold it and quickly trace over the lines. I'm using the same pencil, just use a pen or a pencil that's sharp and go over the lines carefully. And when you lift the paper up, you will see that the design has been transferred onto the wood. It may not be dark, it might be just light but that's all we need for this project. Okay now it's time to add the glue. I squirted some of the glue into the center of the map shape and then using my fine paintbrush, this is a 00 size paintbrush, I'm carefully starting to paint the outline. A couple of things to keep in mind here is that you want to paint your outline to cover the entire pencil line. Go a little bit beyond the pencil line if you need to, but make sure you're covering the line completely so that none of it will show up at the end after you emboss. Here, another tip here is that while you're painting this, you can go slow, there's no need to hurry because this glue will stay tacky, it will not dry and harden up on us. And that's why it's really easy to use with the embossing powder. So I'm just taking my time here, first I did the entire outline of the state, and then using the same paintbrush, I kind of spread the glue inside it. You can of course switch to a bigger paintbrush to spread the glue inside, but I just used the same paintbrush and it worked fine for me. You just want to make sure that you have the entire area covered completely with the glue. And now that you see the glue is kind of turned transparent, and this is a good thing. This means the glue is not really liquid, it's kind of tacky, and now it's time to pour the embossing powder. Pour the embossing powder generously all over and then move the frame so that all of the glue is completely covered by the embossing powder. And then tap the frame to shake off all of the excess. 
tap it a couple of times gently just to shake off all the excess and voila you can already see the stage shape so to the right of my stage shape you can see the sticker mark there because I think that was where the product description and the pricing of this of this wooden frame was so I can uh, knock off all of that embossing powder using my dry paint brush very easily Now this step is actually the most important step. You want to use a dry paint brush and dust off all of the excess embossing powder. So this step is what you want to take your time with. Make sure all of the corners of the frame are clean. Make sure there is no excess embossing powder lingering anywhere. Take your time here because once the embossing powder is on the glue, we are in no hurry to melt it. We can melt it now or even 10 minutes later, it won't make any difference. But you don't want any embossing powder sticking to where it doesn't belong because that will also melt and that will make your frame look untidy. I am now ready to emboss. I'm using a heat gun. Some people call this an embossing gun. You can use a heat tool. You can also try melting embossing powder with a hair dryer. But this is a heat gun that I'm having and I'll actually leave links to the products I've used in the description box if you want to find them yourselves. But you want to let the heat gun heat up nicely before you bring it to your project. So I let it run on the side for about two to three minutes and then I bring it to my project and I keep moving it. You may not see the embossing powder melt immediately, but keep moving the gun back and forth and don't let the gun stay in one place for too long. If you hold the gun in one place for too long, the glue beneath kind of bubbles up and that doesn't look nice. So what you want to do is move the heat gun over the same area if you want to continuously up and down, back and forth until the whole thing melts. And to be honest, this is my favorite part of this craft, just sitting here watching embossing powder melt. There's something so satisfying watching all of that powder become into liquid and it's so beautiful. If by any chance you have, a, you have a little gaps or you have some areas where the embossing powder hasn't completely covered, you can pour more embossing powder over the melted embossing powder while it's still hot and then reheat it. But mine actually covered everything completely and I was very happy with how this looked. So when I tilt the frame here you can kind of see where everything is melted and I actually have a couple of spots where it didn't melt completely. So what I did was after I turned off my gun I went back, I turned it back on and I went in and carefully melted all those areas. So I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It took me about 15 minutes to make this even while filming the video so I'm sure you're going to enjoy making this craft. I think this would be the perfect craft to make with a bunch of friends, to pull out a couple of different colors of embossing powders. I mean gold would look really beautiful on wood or if you have a darker stained wood some white embossing powder would turn out beautiful as well. So let me know if you create something using this tutorial and leave me a comment below if you like this. So thank you so much for spending some crafty time with me today friends. You can find the supplies used in today's video in the description box below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends on social media and before you leave hit the subscribe button to my channel. For more information always stop by my blog smilingcolors.com. I'll see you again soon but till then happy crafting.